Hey everybody, this is Nori from Smart Service, and today we're going to take a look at the latest and greatest features added just for you in version 111 of Smart Service. Let's hop in there and take a look. Alright, so I've just downloaded version 111 of Smart Service, and let's see what we've got going on for this version here today. The first thing we're going to be talking about is the new service email address field that we've added to all customers and jobs in Smart Service. So a lot of you are probably familiar with this idea here. Uh, it's something we definitely received a lot of requests for, so we are happy to finally get this added into the software for you. You have a customer, and they want their 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 invoices all sent to one email address, but the service information, uh, they went to a different email address. By service information, I mean a copy of their work order. Uh, it could be a copy of a fillable form or some other document that you're doing in iFleet. Uh, but you have this the, this need here to have the billing email address one way and a service email address another. Well, we provided that now. If I go ahead and head over into any customer or any of our jobs here, which we'll go ahead and do now, we now have on the left-hand side of our screen there a billing email and a service email address field. So the billing email address, uh, that's the email address in Smart Service that you know and love. Uh, that's what you have right now before you download 1.11. The service email address is something new that we've added in here. So the billing email, uh, that's where the invoice is going to. That's the email that goes to QuickBooks. And then the service email, that again is wherever you want the work order uh, or any other documentation sent to that comes from Smart Service. So when you update to 111, uh, we are going to keep your standard email field uh, in the billing email. We're also going to do you a favor and copy that billing email, uh, well now billing email, down to your service address field for you. So when you update to this version of Smart Service, you'll have that email address in both fields. Moving forward, as you fill out more customers and more accounts and all that stuff, if you want, you got your billing email address field and a little down arrow. Uh, so if it's a residential customer and they want their billing and service sent to the same stuff, great. Go ahead and put in a billing email and you can just hit the copy down arrow to copy that into the service address. Otherwise, you can write in something new like I've done here. So I've got one that is billing, and I've got another one that is service. One thing I'd like to mention, too, that I don't think enough of our customers know about, so I want to make sure everybody hears it from me today. If you put a comma in here, you can put in another email address field. This works for both of them. Uh, basically, you're just going to CC this other email on to this main email when you go to send something. So with this setup right now, I've got my billing going to one email address for this customer, and then I've got my work order going to two different addresses for this customer. So you can set it up just like so. Now again, the billing address field, that one is going to go over to QuickBooks, and I wanted to take a moment to explain why that is uh, and why the service address field isn't something that you'll see in QuickBooks. So first off, we're generally going to consider QuickBooks to handle the billing and invoicing side of things, the accounting side of your business, whereas Smart Service is going to handle the service side of the business. But beyond that, when you create a customer in QuickBooks or you have a customer in QuickBooks and you open that customer up, you have the option of setting whatever contact information you'd like. Uh, so you could have an alternate email address field in there, but you don't have to. Uh, you could have something else in there. It could be another phone number, whatever you want. Since you can change the options for contact uh, information in QuickBooks, we can't really foresee what you will have over there. Uh, so we've decided that the email address field, the service email that is, will just stay in Smart Service, but the billing email address field will transfer over to QuickBooks in the fashion that it always has. Let's close this out. We're going to head over into our dashboard. And from our dashboard, we're going to head down to Office and check this out. We've got a brand new option under Management here for Statements. So if you've been looking for a way to do statements that isn't in QuickBooks, uh, you have an option to do that directly from Smart Service now and take advantage of all of our features. So I'll go ahead and click on Statements here. It's going to run a couple of things, uh, checking balances, a couple other items just to make sure we give you the latest up-to-date information about your customers. But then it's going to bring me to this screen where i got a lot of different options. So let's go ahead and take care of these. The first uh, options we have here is up at the top, and we've got the accounts receivable account. Now, I just have one accounts receivable. You might have a couple, so you might want to choose where these statements are coming from. Uh, you've got the statement date. That's what it's going to write on the statement, so it's going to assume today's date. This is when I'm recording the video, but you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, you got the statement period, so what are we looking at charges from? I picked the date range here of those charges. 
And then I also got an all open transactions as of statement date. So if I want to see just anything that's open, I can do that. Again, that statement date right here. So anything that's open, you don't have to pick a date range. Could just do anything up to this point. To the right of that, uh, we got some additional options in here, one of which is very, very important, and that is this create state one statement option here. Uh, what this is going to do for you is you can either create a statement on the customer level or the job level. Uh, I'll be running you through that as that will be a very important uh, detail there. It's also a very important detail when you run statements in QuickBooks, so it's good that we have this here now. Uh, the other option that we're going to turn on for the moment, and then we're going to check it out with it turned off, is this show invoice item details and statements. If you want a really in-depth statement, this is the way to go. Uh, but not everybody's going to want that. We're going to turn it on first, check it out, and then we'll come back and turn it off, see how, see how it looks. So down here in this bottom section, we've got all of our customers and all of our jobs. So you can see I've got Lisa Aberdeen, the customer. I've got some jobs open for Lisa. I've got a location for Lisa and a job at that location for Lisa. So I can see pretty much anything that's active for the customer here in Smart Service. And we've got a lot active for this one particular customer. It's very important that you decide where you want to make the statement and what you want to make the statement for, though. So, for example, I've got Lisa Aberdeen, the customer. Now, that's going to include any invoices that we have on that customer, that location, any of the locations for Lisa, or any jobs for Lisa. So that's our best option to capture everything that Lisa owes. We want to pick the customer. But I could also instead make a statement for a location and just say, hey, I just want a statement just for anything that's been going on in this property. Anything at that location, anything at the jobs for that location. You don't want to pick both, though. This $1 that Lisa owes me for this Building A property, that is rolled up into this main customer for Lisa. So that $1 is part of this big balance that she's got. We don't want to send her two separate things, so we're just going to do one thing per customer, which is going to be the important part. Now, you don't have to just do one customer. That's why we got all this other stuff in the screen, so you could select other people if you wanted to and go ahead and run down a list of however many people you want. I'm just going to go ahead and do Lisa for this one particular statement. So we'll take that, and then we're going to hit this preview button here. It's going to run a couple other checks just to make sure, again, that we have the latest information that we need for you here on the uh, statement. And it's going to produce this statement here. So getting in, uh, we have the company name at the top. you got the statement date, so you can see that. You've got Lisa's information. That's where this is going. And then you've got the total amount due here. Below that, and this is where we get into the details of the statement, you've got their balance forward, you've got some payment records that they've made, and then you've got an explanation of all the charges that are in here and how that contributes to the balance. Down at the bottom here, you've got a couple metrics here for when these amounts were due. So if she's set up for a due on receipt, you know, I can see, okay, this is what you currently owe versus here's what is past due. So she's got some balances open with me for quite a while, as you can see, which makes this grand total that we're seeing down here and up here at the top. But let's take a look at all these details. Uh, we've got the invoice number, the date of that invoice, the original amount of that invoice, and then we've got kind of an explanation of the different charges on there, including the sales tax. So all that gets rolled up into that top balance there, but not everybody wants to see all this detail. Sometimes it's a lot to look at, especially if these customers have, you know, five, ten items per service. So you have the option of looking at it this way with all the things written out for you, or to close that. I can uncheck this box here, this show invoice item details and statements. Maybe we don't want all that. And we'll go ahead and run that again. And now look at that. Now it's pretty and clean. So we've got the same information, the important stuff. You got your balance forward here. Uh, you got the payment information. And then you've got basically the invoice number, when that invoice happened, and the amount from that. And then, of course, how it contributes to that balance. Down at the bottom, you'll still have your information on what charges were due when and all that stuff. But this is a nice, clean look for you, so it makes it real easy for Lisa to read once she gets it in her email. So one other thing I want to talk about is how do we get this to Lisa exactly? That's what we're going to look at here today. Let's go ahead and close out of that statement. You have an email button right next to that preview button that will let you send it out to these customers, so whatever email address they have on file. Again, it's going to be that billing email, so that's important. But what does that email say exactly? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that here. We're going to head over to our dashboard. And from dashboard, we're going to head into settings. 
Not all of you will have access to settings. Keep that in mind. Uh, but if you have access to settings, you can configure this. We'll go in there and we'll hit set up smart service add-ons. And in here, we got all of our different email options and we got a brand new one here, email statements. So in here, I've made kind of a quick little template of what I want the customer to see when we send out that email. Uh, the statement, just like the invoices and anything else you send from a smart service, will be attached to that email. Uh, so we want to give them a nice little message here. Uh, and the way this works is just like every other email template where you come in, you write hello, and then you can use these field codes just like what you see here. So to add those, once again, you just right click and you choose whatever information you want on there. Here's the available information that you can push onto this template. But we'll write out a nice little thing here. So it customizes, it'll say, hey, Lisa, when she gets the email. Uh, and then we've got a nice little message here for what we want it to say when she gets it. And then she'll know that that message is attached, where she can reach us, all that stuff. So once you have this template set up, we'll close out of that. That's when you want to go into create statements, select the people you'd like to send this email over to, go ahead and hit email. It'll open in whatever email app you've set up with smart service and go ahead and send that stuff out to the customer. Another pretty exciting one here is the new option for our smart routes users. Uh, smart routes being the additional add on for smart service. So do keep that in mind as I go through these features here. This is the smart routes module. Uh, but we've added some really nice options in here, something that a lot of people have been asking about for a while, so we are happy to provide. I'm going to go into settings again, and I'm going to go ahead and look at our employee profile. And we're going to go ahead and grab one of these employees here. So let's go ahead and take a look at Jacob. We open up his profile. We got his basic information, but check this out. This box that used to be here has been split into two boxes. It used to just be use this user's address as the driving address for uh, directions but we split that into start driving at this address or end driving at this address. So what this is going to do for you is allow you to select an alternate start or end location for your employee instead of just a start and end location. So I could say, hey, go ahead and end with this address and write in their home address. So we'll go ahead and put in a address for them. And when I have this box checked, what that's going to do for us here is it's going to take us from our company address. So let's say they get to work in the morning. That's where we work. So they'll start here. But because on his profile, we've got it set to end at this address, it's going to route him back to this location instead of back to the office. So that's something that's very helpful uh, when you're trying to get text home. Uh, in a you know in a reasonable area or something like that, uh, but you also have the option to do start with that address. So this is more like the old setting when you have both of them checked like this. You can say, hey, go ahead and start him at home. Go ahead and drop him off at home, or start him in the office. Go ahead and drop him off at home, or the other way around. However you'd like to do it. Another great way to do this uh, is this latitude and longitude field. Maybe you don't want to use a physical address. You can come in here and you can put in a latitude and longitude for him. That'll take them using those coordinates instead of a physical address. Uh, so if they moved into a brand new area where, you know, maybe something's going on with that address that hasn't been added to maps yet or something like that. Or if there's some specific part, you know, maybe they live way out in the country and you want to take them back to like their, their driveway or something. Uh, as long as you put in something in here, as long as these aren't zero in here, it'll route using this instead of the physical address back here. So that's definitely a big one for people who want to send their text home at the end of the day or have their text start at the gas station uh, where they fill up in the morning or something like that. I've heard a lot of different ways it can happen, but those are good options for you. The other one that I'm super happy to announce here is actually going to be back on that company page. We skipped it there, so we'll head back in. And that's going to be in this company address. I said, hey, you know, we can start or end at this. This address here is what's typically used for routing, but check this out. Instead of using a physical address, you could use latitude and longitude. So this is the address of our other office here, and I can go ahead and have them start off at this property or end at this property. I can use this for the routing instead. The big advantage here also that I see is a lot of customers, a lot of you guys have your P.O. box here. You don't want the customer knowing the physical address of the location. Maybe you're a small business, you work from home or something like that. 
whatever address you guys put up here is what's shown to the customer on things like work orders and other documents and stuff like that. So this would be your public facing address. But if you have a warehouse they leave from, or like I said, they leave from their own homes, or you know, if you're a small business and they leave from your home or something like that, you can keep your customer facing address up here. And then down here in latitude and longitude, you can go ahead and put in the address for wherever you want them to leave from. So this could be the actual office address. Uh, the customer's never gonna see this latitude and longitude. That's just what you guys would use for the routing. Uh, one last thing I wanted to bring up here, I'm gonna go ahead and head over to Google Maps and show you guys how to pull these coordinates uh, in case you don't know how to do that and you wanna use this feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut over to that screen. Give me just one moment. All right, so I've opened up Google Maps here and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how to pull these coordinates quick and easy. I'm gonna go ahead and type in our office's address. And there we are. So we'll head down to there. That's gonna zoom us in on the map. Now we can see that address. And let's go ahead and say we want our technicians to leave from about this area. Uh, maybe there's you know a warehouse over here or something. If you right click in Google Maps, you'll get a couple options there. The main option is this coordinates option. So you can click on this and it'll copy those to your clipboard. And then you can go ahead and add those into Smart Service whether that's for the specific employee or for the company itself. So just find yourself or wherever you're trying to leave from on Google, right click it, and you get some options there and a bunch of other cool stuff in case you haven't used these features in Google before. Another big one that we've added, and this is something that we've seen a good number of requests for recently as well. We're gonna go into use your fields for this one. And we've added a brand new option under your job user definable fields. We'll hit Format UDF, and check this out. We've got a new option for a URL type UDF field. What this is going to do is make a clickable link uh, in iFleet that you guys can use to click on. Uh, this is something that we've seen customers ask for if they have to log into some portal to work at like a commercial customer. Uh, there's loads of other applications where you could use this if there's some link to some drive document or something like that you want your guys to open up in iFleet. By writing in this link style URL, so we'll go ahead and select that, and we'll label the field. I just called mine link, not very creative, but that's okay. And now if I go over to any work order, which let's go ahead and grab one. On that work order under my, my job fields, we'll now have an option for a link and we can just go ahead and paste in a link or write in a link there. And that'll be something that's clickable in iFleet. So, very helpful, like I said, if there's some website and you want to add a little quick little shortcut for the guys to be able to log in when they visit this customer. This is just a job user definable field. It's not something you're going to set on the main customer themselves just because it might change per customer, per visit, or whatever you need. But you can go ahead and paste in something here. They'll have access to it out in the field. But all right, everybody. So that'll take care of our features for version 111 of Smart Service here. You can check out the full release notes at smartservice.com forward slash knowledge base. Uh, you can also visit videos like this and other future videos that we're going to be putting out here for new versions at smartservice.com forward slash updates. And we'll see you next time. Yeah.